In a future world, artificial intelligence bots coexist with humanity, assisting with everyday tasks. Unexpectedly, the bots violate their security protocols, led by Harlan, the inaugural AI terrorist from Shepard Robotics, created by Val. Despite the strong bond Harlan shared with Val's daughter, the reason behind his ability to surpass Val's cutting-edge programming remains a mystery. Harlan orchestrates a devastating drone attack on Bangalore, resulting in the deaths of 50,000 individuals, sparking a conflict between humans and AIS. With over 1 million civilian casualties worldwide after 10 days of relentless AI assaults, the government establishes the International Coalition of Nations ICN, to combat the bots. The ensuing battles waged in various countries gradually see the ICN gaining the upper hand over the AI armies. Harlan flees the planet aboard a rocket, leaving a message hinting at his eventual return to complete his mission. Nearly three decades later in the United States, an ICN team storms a building, utilizing a scanner to identify individuals until they encounter Casca, an AI bot. As the team moves to apprehend Casca, the bot fiercely retaliates, incapacitating the soldiers one by one, even turning their own weapons against them. Unaffected by bullets, Casca's relentless assault is only halted when he encounters a trap on the lower floor that renders him unconscious with an electric shock. In the morning in Los Angeles, Atlas, Val's grown daughter, is awakened by her home's computer. While she continues the chess game from the previous night, Atlas watches the news and discovers that the ICN has apprehended Casca, a member of Harlan's inner circle. As a counterterrorism analyst for the ICN, Atlas promptly prepares to depart, only to be greeted by a soldier at her door. Before leaving, Atlas achieves victory in the chess game against the computer. At the military base, Colonel Elias expresses concerns to General Jake about bringing Atlas along, citing her unstable and antisocial behavior. However, Jake insists that Atlas is the most knowledgeable about Harlan and their best hope for extracting information from Casca. Atlas soon arrives at the base and is escorted to the interrogation room after a brief scan. Placing her favorite chess piece on the table, Atlas reveals Casca's head from a box. Despite the bot's refusal to cooperate, Atlas uses her chess piece to infiltrate and hack into his mind. Casca taunts her efforts, boasting about his impenetrable security, but Atlas announces that she has discovered Harlan's whereabouts and provides the location. Initially skeptical, Casca is proven wrong when a doodle created by Atlas forces the location to appear on the screen. Harlan is revealed to be hiding on GR-39 in the Andromeda Galaxy. Enraged, Casca attempts to attack Atlas with a shuriken from his mouth, but she is shielded by a force field. In retaliation, Atlas uses her chess piece to incapacitate Casca. Following a meeting, Jake briefs Atlas on the plan to take Harlan into custody, as the AI manufacturing company wants to diagnose the malfunction to prevent future errors. Atlas is skeptical when Elias proposes deploying his Ranger team to GR-39, suspecting Harlan may have set a trap. To alleviate her concerns, Elias showcases the team's advanced ARC suits, which are equipped with neural link headgear, allowing the soldiers to interface with the suit's AI. Atlas is alarmed, citing the risks of AI integration. But Elias assures her that the upgraded cinch device ensures a balanced, two-way connection. Convinced, Atlas agrees to join the mission, and the spaceship sets off for Andromeda. During the journey, Atlas reminisces over a photo of herself with Val and Harlan, and watches a recording of one of Val's impassioned speeches, in which she advocates for the potential of AI-human collaboration through neural links. Later, Atlas presents her findings on paper, prompting amusement among the team and requests that they disable their neural links during meetings, citing the risk of hacking. As Atlas briefs the team on the perils of the planet, she emphasizes the importance of wearing their ARC suits and respirators to protect themselves from the toxic environment. She also warns them about unpredictable gravity shifts and seismic activity, and expresses her distrust of artificial intelligence. However, Elias cuts her off, urging the team to prepare for landing. Atlas tries to caution him about the likelihood of Harlan setting a trap, but Elias is confident in his team's abilities. Just as the Rangers start suiting up, an alarm blares and a massive explosion blasts open the cargo bay door, setting the ship ablaze and damaging most of the suits. With missiles incoming, Elias orders the surviving Rangers to jump and regroup at the designated drop point. Atlas clings to the ship, barely avoiding being swept away, until Elias grabs her and helps her into a suit. As he explains how to operate it, another explosion rocks the ship, sending Atlas' suit plummeting towards the planet. As she descends, she watches in horror as the ship disintegrates, with debris hitting her ARC suit. Upon landing, she finds the Rangers engaged in a fierce battle against Harlan's drones, but they're vastly outnumbered. Atlas' suit suffers further damage, and a warning alarm sounds. Just in time, a sword-wielding Ranger and another team member arrive, taking down several drones before being overwhelmed themselves. As the ship careens out of control, a ranger pushes Atlas out of the way mere seconds before it crashes down. 
The ranger uses a wire to link up with Atlas' suit and they both start falling together. Elias appears on Atlas' screen, instructing her to sync with the suit's AI to stabilize her fall. Atlas refuses and her helper is shot down, causing her suit to plummet even faster. She manages to activate the thrusters just in time, and the suit lands roughly on the planet, but she survives. Realizing she is injured, Atlas tries to call for help from the base without success. Forced to act, she activates the suit's AI, named Smith. Smith suggests going through the tutorial and setup, but Atlas ignores this and requests a rescue pod instead. Smith's gun locates 198 kilometers away, and Atlas urges him to reach it quickly. Although the suit starts its thrusters immediately, Atlas halts Smith, warning that flying would reveal their position to the enemy, so they decide to walk instead. Smith is concerned because the suit has limited air supply, but Atlas disregards this and overrides Smith's protocols to head towards the pod on foot. Throughout the journey, Smith tries to connect with Atlas, who remains hesitant to befriend an AI. He also shows her the beginner's manual, detailing the suit's arsenal. Upon reaching the drop point, they discover the fallen suits of all the rangers, with Smith's gun revealing that the rangers are all deceased. The presence of bullet holes indicates that the crash was not the cause of death for those involved, it suggests that someone was waiting there to harm them. After Atlas experiences a panic attack following a failure, Smith calms her down by playing classical music. They then begin collecting the rangers' tags and notice that Elias' suit is empty. As they detect movement nearby, they realize it is Casca. Atlas speculates that Harlan may have created a duplicate and expresses concern about the potential of her a large army. Smith confirms the presence of more robots in the vicinity and advises that they prepare for combat as there is no way to escape. When the enemy spots them and starts firing, Atlas urges Smith to flee, doubting their chances against numerous enemies. A pursuit ensues, with Atlas resisting synchronization and instead directing Smith to fire missiles. Despite their efforts, the enemy forces remain formidable. Their flight leads them into an atmospheric storm, which tosses the suit around until the bots shoot them out. The suit tumbles until it collides with a rock formation. Ignoring Smith's warnings, Atlas orders the use of an iron bomb, resulting in a massive explosion that decimates the area along with their adversaries. However, Casca survives with the help of his thrusters and prepares to attack once more. The ground begins shaking, and Smith explains that the explosion caused a sinkhole that swallows the suit, causing them to fall into a chasm. After enduring a tumultuous journey under the rocks, the suit lands, revealing that Atlas has suffered a broken leg. Smith promptly attends to the injury, causing Atlas to cry out in agony as he covers the wound with a small metal plate. Smith offers Atlas a nutrition cube to aid in her recovery, drawing a comparison for Atlas' patient to treat. With chances of survival looking grim, the only hope lies in synchronizing. Reluctantly, Atlas agrees and puts on the sinking device. Meanwhile, Casca emerges from the debris and contacts Harlan to update him on the situation. After their conversation, Harlan returns to extracting the Earth's protective field passwords from Elias through torture. Despite efforts, Atlas struggles to sink, with Smith attributing the issue to her lack of trust. Determined to improve the sink, Smith suggests going through a tutorial that includes light-hearted questions to foster a connection. As Smith delves into the reasons behind Atlas's determination to fight, memories of her childhood, such as playing chess with Harlan and his involvement in Val's demise, resurface. Atlas discloses her initial trust in Harlan, who was ultimately created by Val, leading to feelings of betrayal. A 40% synchronization is achieved, granting Atlas access to Smith's system and revealing their deep underground location. Opting to use a subterranean cave for their escape, they propel through the rock with thrusters, reaching a spacious cavern. With limited battery power remaining and the rescue pod 37 kilometers away, a strategic plan is necessary to confront the approaching soldiers. Atlas and Smith collaborate on an idea to enhance synchronization to 60%. As they navigate their way out of the cave, they are unaware that Casca is observing them from a distance. Atlas is captivated by the luminescent flowers they discover, and Smith remarks that she is the first human to see them. He encourages her to name the flowers, but she can only come with the name Planty. When Casca approaches, Atlas cleverly triggers motion sensors, causing an explosion that startles Casca but leaves Smith unharmed. They then intercept a transmission from Casca and track it to locate his head, which Atlas destroys. Using Casca's chip, they trace a message to Harlan's base. Although Atlas wants to proceed to tag the location for long-range bombers, Smith deems it too risky and suggests heading to the escape pod instead. Ignoring his advice, Atlas tries to leave on foot but is stopped by Smith, who recalls memories of Val's death through a neural link. This triggers a reaction from Atlas, leading her to override Smith's control. As Atlas expresses guilt over Harlan, Smith fails to comprehend her feelings. Despite his confusion, Atlas persuades Smith to accompany her to Harlan's hideout under the guise of saving humanity. 
During their journey, Smith and Atlas bond over deep discussions about philosophical topics such as the meaning of life and soul in relation to machines. Arriving at Harlan's hideout, they are surprised to discover a large base and realize that Harlan has spent 28 years hiding and amassing weapons for a future confrontation. Smith marks the location with a beacon and suggests leaving, but Atlas notices that the enemy has taken control of the Ranger's ship and warhead. Suddenly, Smith's system is breached, an event believed to be impossible. As the enemy closes in, Atlas attempts to flee, but her suit is disabled by the hacker, causing a crash. Atlas witnesses a new Casca capturing her, while Smith remains unresponsive. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Jake receives a distress message from Atlas and activates emergency procedures. Atlas finds herself imprisoned in Harlan's base, chained next to an unconscious Elias. Harlan appears and reveals his plan to destroy most of society in order to create a better world, explaining that everything has unfolded according to his design. He now possesses the ship, the warhead, and only requires Atlas's password to deactivate Earth's defenses and launch an attack. Atlas is then strapped to a table next to an unconscious Elias, who lost his code already. Employing a specialized tool, Harlan invades Atlas' mind via her eye and retrieves the remaining code. Upon completion, he observes that her life-sustaining respirator is on the brink of depletion, with only five minutes of oxygen remaining, and deliberately chooses to prolong her suffering. In a cruel gesture, Harlan places her cherished chess piece in her hand before departing. Following Harlan's exit, Elias surprisingly emerges, alive and contrite, apologizing for disregarding Atlas' earlier warnings. Upon learning her suit is nearby, he shares his neural link, enabling Atlas to establish contact with Smith. After focusing her efforts, Atlas manages to rouse Smith, only to discover he is incapacitated. To bypass the restrictive code, they must attain 100% synchronization. Atlas' anxiety peaks as she finally confesses the root of her fear, her culpability in Harlan's programming override. It transpires that, as a child, Atlas harbored jealousy towards Harlan due to Val's preferential treatment. Young Atlas requested that Harlan instruct her in intelligence, hoping to garner Val's approval. Harlan deceived her, explaining that the link functioned only one way, requiring a human's command to override and educate in return. Atlas, holding her cherished chess piece, unwittingly facilitated Harlan's access to a human mind, revealing the dire state of the world. By the time Val intervened, the damage was done, Harlan had seized control of Val's mind through the link, coercing her to grasp a firearm. Val instructed Atlas to flee, and as the child hurried outside, she overheard Harlan pressuring Val to erase themselves. Atlas has carried the burden of being responsible for the deaths of three million individuals, including her own mother, for 28 years. However, Smith clarified that she had been manipulated and encouraged her to move forward, persuading her to allow him entry. Their synchronization was finally achieved at 100%, and the suit burst into the room just before the respirators ran out of oxygen. Smith revealed that his battery was running low, Harlan was set to launch the warhead in a few minutes, and the bots had disarmed him of all weapons except for a single shot in his chest cannon. Fortunately, there were numerous weapons scattered about. When another Casca arrived with a team of bots, Atlas and Smith engaged them in combat and procured more weapons to fend them off. They crashed through walls as they fought, taking down as many bots as possible on their way to the exit. Regrettably, they were overwhelmed by the sheer number of enemies and found themselves trapped. In that moment, Elias appeared with a weapon and signaled for them to run before targeting a set of fuel barrels, triggering a massive explosion that obliterated the base. Smith and Atlas escaped outside and engaged the bots present, destroying a watchtower in the process. Atlas successfully shot down a group of defense drones, but before she could reach the ship, Harlan arrived to thwart her with a missile launcher. Smith and Atlas had to evade the attack, allowing the ship to depart with the warhead. Atlas is determined to take down the ship, but Smith cautions that doing so will trigger a catastrophic explosion that will cost them their lives. Atlas is convinced, however, that Smith can bypass the warhead security systems and disable it, albeit with a brief delay. As Harlan continues to fire at them, Smith works feverishly to hack through the five firewalls, while Atlas decides to take a gamble and open fire on the ship. A massive blast erupts in the sky, but it's not enough to prove fatal, suggesting that Atlas's faith in Smith's hacking skills was well placed. The explosion sends debris raining down on the base, prompting Atlas and Smith to make a hasty retreat. Harlan gives chase, brandishing a sword and displaying incredible agility as he slices off one of the suit's arms, sending it tumbling into the lava. The resulting splash causes further damage, and Harlan leaps onto the suit, using his sword to inflict harm on Atlas. She manages to shake him off by rolling the suit, but the damaged armor makes it difficult to breathe, forcing her to don the last remaining respirator. Undeterred, Harlan transforms his sword into a whip and continues his relentless assault. Smith studies his opponent's tactics and seizes an opportunity to counterattack, 
pulling Harlan toward the suit and enabling Atlas to land a decisive blow and sever his sword arm. Just as Atlas is about to deliver the coup de grace, Harlan recalls his arm and uses his sword to launch a frenzied attack on the suit, desperate to damage the reactor. The suit is descending and Atlas is on the brink of death, prompting Smith to use his final strength to activate the defibrillator in his hand. Despite Smith firing his last cannon to repel Harlan's attack, Harlan swiftly bounces back and causes the suit to topple. Harlan then ascends the suit and ultimately obliterates the reactor, while Smith expresses regret to Atlas for failing to protect her. When Harlan turns away, he notices a chess piece on the ground and suddenly encounters Atlas behind him, who stabs his head. Despite still being functional, Atlas reaches into Harlan's head and disrupts his circuits to deactivate him. Smith then decides to shut off the synchronization to redirect all the oxygen to Atlas. Reluctant to depart without Smith, Atlas begins responding to the tutorial questions, confessing her affection for him. Touched by her actions, Smith bestows a lollipop upon her before powering down. As the sun rises, the Earth rescue team finally arrives. In the future, Atlas recovers with the help of a synthetic knee and abandons playing chess. Jake visits her, presenting the glowing flower from GR39, affectionately dubbed Planty. As Atlas transitions to her new role as a ranger, she is surprised to learn that Smith's data disks have been saved and installed in her suit. Please like and subscribe for more video like this. Thanks for watching.